In this video, we're going to find out if it's possible to create a Jeopardy simulation, but before we dive in, especially for our younger viewers, let's take a moment to revisit what Jeopardy actually is. This term for a long-handled gardening tool can also mean an immoral pleasure seeker. Ken. What's a hoe? No. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Sounds fun to try this with AI agents, right? But before we start creating this simulation from scratch, let me share my motivation behind this project. After receiving a comment from one of you asking for a tutorial on integrating local open source language models with Autogen, I was intrigued. The setup was surprisingly straightforward. A simple installation of LM Studio and a tweak in the config did the trick. But I'll admit, at first it lacked that spark of excitement. Why not turn this into a thrilling contest? I first toyed with the idea of a dance battle between AI-generated images, even considering a GPT-powered vision referee. By the way, if an AI dance battle sounds fun, hit like. It'll tell me your game for such tech antics, and I might just make it happen next. But then, nostalgia struck, and I thought back to the golden era of linear TV and its most iconic quiz show. I immediately began sketching out a strategy. My goal was to stage an epic Jeopardy battle between various language models. Why rely on comparison tables when you can have language models compete in a Jeopardy simulation? <laughs> You're right! <laughs> Autogen seemed like the perfect solution for setting up the agents in this scenario. I set up GPT 3.5 and Llama 2 for a friendly AI showdown, with GPT 4 stepping in as the moderator. I employed function mapping to grant the moderator the ability to interact with the SQL database. The database is sensible for storing questions, each with its corresponding answer, category, and point value. Additionally, functions are necessary to retrieve and update players' scores. The initial question was how to get a language model like Llama 2 up and running on my Mac. That's when I stumbled upon LM Studio, a user-friendly tool recommended for downloading and operating LLMs on virtually any system. After downloading LM Studio, it was a breeze to get the language model active. Just a few simple clicks and I immediately had access to a bunch of LLMs. What's more, LM Studio offers an API that aligns seamlessly with OpenAI's chat completion conventions, making the integration process smooth and straightforward. Another challenge arose, how to elevate this from simple console logs to a dynamic browser-based display. The basic concept revolves around utilizing Flask, a standard Python web server, and implementing sockets for enabling Autogen to communicate with a web page. Since Autogen doesn't natively support socket messages, we resorted to monkey patching to override the console print methods. I know it's a bit unconventional, but it gets the job done. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> the next step involved leveraging Python and PyAutogen to bring everything together. The first task was configuring the setup to integrate the local language models, alongside GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4. Moving forward, we crafted distinct agents within the system. The centerpiece is the moderator agent designed to orchestrate the game. Its role? To await a category selection from the players, then pose a random question pulled from our comprehensive database. But that's not all. This moderator is also smart enough to update a player's score whenever they nail an answer correctly. Then we introduce our players, Peter and Bob. Both are programmed to choose categories and answer questions, adding a competitive edge to the game. However, there's a twist in their configuration. Peter operates using the local language model. On the other hand, Bob is powered by GPT 3.5, bringing a different style of intelligence and reasoning to the table. In Autogen, all conversations are done through agents, even for user input. Setting the user proxy's human input mode to never means it won't ask users for additional input. We then bring all the agents to the table, crafting a group chat where they can interact and defining the group chat manager to oversee the exchange. In the run function, we kick off the Jeopardy style game process. 
It begins with players selecting a category, followed by the moderator presenting a question within that realm. Players then take turns answering, ensuring a lively and equitable game. Let's take a quick peek at the database code, crafted entirely by ChatGPT. It's neatly divided into two parts. The function declarations, which guide the agents on how to call functions and what parameters are needed, and the actual implementation, where the magic happens. For a more detailed exploration, check out the GitHub link in the description. And now it's time for the grand showdown. The first question is from the moderator asking which category and Bob chooses literature. Here is the first question. This novel features a character named Dr. T.J. Eckelberg. Bob asks, what is the great Gatsby? And the answer is correct. Bob scores 800 points. Peter decides on the category history. Here's the question. The emperor who reigned before Napoleon. Peter's answer is Napoleon. Unfortunately wrong, Peter scores no points this round. Bob chooses the science category. The model crucial to understanding this biological structure. Bob asks, what is DNA? Bob is correct again and leads with 1600 points. Peter chooses the geography category. Here comes the question. The second largest island in the Mediterranean Sea. Peter asks, what is Corsica? Unfortunately wrong again. Losers in other words. Bob wants a new category, world capitals. Unfortunately, there are currently no questions for that. So he chooses something from the art category. Here's the question. This ancient technique involves setting small pieces of stone or glass. Bob asks, what is mosaic? And it's correct again. I think with this, we have a clear winner. Bob, powered by OpenAI's GPT 3.5, has triumphed over Llama 27B in this exciting round.